When you have a friend, wenn du einen Freund hast, you always want to be close to that friend. Dann möchtest du immer nah bei deinem Freund sein. And I believe most of you, you are seated close to your friends. Und ich glaube, die meisten von euch sitzen nah bei ihren Freunden. Jack, am I right? Wenn ich, ist es richtig? Halleluja. Okay. So if you sit close to your friend, wenn du nah bei deinem Freund sitzt, then you can tell your friend everything about you. Dann kannst du deinem Freund alles über dich erzählen. And so Jesus is our friend. Und Jesus ist unser Freund. What a friend we have in Jesus. Was für einen Freund haben wir in Jesus? We can take everything to him because he cares for us. Wir können alles zu ihm bringen, denn er sorgt sich um uns. Join us in the song What a friend we have in Jesus. Bekleidet uns in das Lied Welch ein Freund ist unser Jesus.
grateful heart Give thanks to the Holy One Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son He's given Jesus Christ His Son And now let the weak say I am strong Let the poor say I am rich Because of what the Lord has done extraordinary times don't we and uh, here we are having our first online service so to speak Emmanuel Church has as far as I know never been closed it started in 1933 before the Second World War and to the best of my knowledge uh, during all of the time that it's been open it's never been closed uh, until now and this is extraordinary times and it's a very sad situation but such as it is and if it weren't for the fact that there being a general edict that churches should close, then my tendency would still be to keep it open. My heart wants to keep it open. My head says, be sensible. And my head at the moment, you know, obviously is going with that. Uh, but the fact that the building is closed does not mean the church is closed. You can't close the church of God because it is the church of God without a shadow of doubt about it. Um, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, Jesus said when he was talking to uh, well, who became the Apostle Peter. And that is true. If, and if the gates of hell cannot prevail against it, then certainly this coronavirus can't either. And consequently, we are operating in a different way, but not in not a way, so to speak. We're doing different things. And today is the first of those times. And today I just want to talk to you very uh, briefly uh, about Psalm 23. Because Psalm 23 was written by David, uh, King David, and it was written as, about a journey that he took in the presence of God. And of course, in the centre of that psalm is that uh, wonderful verse that we cling on to so often in terms of uh, disaster and difficult times. If I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And surely if there is ever a time that we needed in our lifetimes, this comfort of God, this rod of God to guide us, uh, this journey we take through the valley of the shadow of death, and it's now. So just to read that psalm to you, if I may. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And, and so we will. So as I said a moment ago, even these um, th these difficult times can't separate us from the love of God and they can't take us out of the house of God. The house of God is, is, is our home, our spiritual home. It's where we get our, our sustenance and our life from. So I want to look at this psalm uh, with you now to go through that difficult time. The psalm is about transition. It's about a way that was going on to a way that is. The psalm is about a journey with the traveller starting off in the certainty of the present, the green pastures. And that's where we were, at least up until a week or two ago, isn't it? And then being led and guided and sometimes uh, even just to be stilled by waters, sometimes along right paths, sometimes through the treacherous valleys of the shadow of despair. If only we could guarantee that life wasn't like that. Wouldn't it be fantastic if even as Christians we could be sure that there would be no reason at all to fear the valley of the shadow of death. But if we are to be honest with you, we do fear. We, we do fear. We do have that worry inside us. And why wouldn't we? Fear is a terrible thing in that it can constrain and constrict. Uh, it can reduce our life chances. It can be a real hindrance to the daily lives that we want to live. On the other hand, fear also stops us falling off the sides of cliffs. Fear also tells us that when we've gone up far enough up a ladder, that's it, no further can we go. Fear also tells us to be careful of speed. It tells us to be careful of vulnerability. So fear in itself is not bad. But when fear runs our lives, then there is a, a problem that we need to overcome. And the problem with something like coronavirus or wars if they break out or famines when they come, shortages in the supermarkets like we've just experienced, they, they all tend to engender some sort of fear in us. On the one hand, therefore, we should be careful with that fear to make sure it never dominates our lives, but we should, on the other hand, be aware of it to make sure that we don't overstep the mark. And the balance between those two things is quite a difficult thing to achieve if we can achieve it. But we are the children of God. And, and as such, our dependency needs to be on his sufficiency. There's never going to be a shortage of the power of God. There's never going to be panic buying of his love that will exhaust his supplies. There's never going to be a time when the shelves are empty as far as the provision of God is concerned. He is our all-sufficient one. He is never going to lack. He is never going to stop. He is never going to give up. He is never going to be empty. He is never going to fail. He is never going to uh, give us a barren time. He is a good God. He is our good God. He is our great God. And we have our dependency in that sufficiency that he has. I, I want to uh, also be conscious that when, when King David wrote this psalm, he wrote it out of personal experience. It wasn't an academic line of thought. Most of David's psalms are written from personal, personal experience and you can see that in the way that he writes them. You can see his anguish, you can see his despair, you can see his joy, you can see his guilt sometimes, you can see his anxieties, you can see his praise, you can see his self-discipline, you can see his heart 
He was very much a, a, a king who wore his heart on his sleeve as far as God was concerned. He worshipped so much in public that he got told off for it, which I think is a fantastic experience. Uh, to know that, that the king of kings, or the, the, the primary king of the day, David, uh, was to, um, to be told off for worshipping God too much. Of course, he, he didn't buy that. He, he replied that he can dance even more than that. But there's no question of doubt about it. We need to learn from David to be able to take our personal experiences and run with them. And run with them. It is personal. Our relationship with God is always personal. It's never second-hand. It's never theoretical. It doesn't come out of a book. It's not something which you can have on behalf of somebody else. You can't inherit it from your parents. It's a personal, personal relationship. And in that I go with the Apostle Peter when he wrote, Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. That's the personal nature of the relationship. He cares for us. We are pretty good at having anxieties, even in the good times. We're just not very good, most of the time, at giving them to God. Often we prefer to internalise them. We prefer to carry that particular baggage ourselves. And consequently, uh, we deny ourselves the real freedom of giving God the anxieties that we have. So let me tell you to this evening, because it is this evening, I'm recording this on Friday night, that God is our shepherd. Between verses 1 and 3 of, of the psalm, we have a rustic setting indicating the good times in our lives. These are lush valley experiences that we go through. They are places where God seems to really work in our hearts, really work in our lives. And, and we want for nothing. We want for nothing. It's a wonderful time. When the Bible refers to sheep, uh, it is a metaphor of people, which gives a fairly, in the scripture you'll find sometimes those sheep are referred to positively, sometimes those sheep are referred to negatively. Uh, and that's again, like us. We sometimes are uh, a negative thing. Our humanity sometimes takes us in difficult ways, but sometimes it's a good thing as well. Let me give you two contrasting examples. In Isaiah 53 verse 6, uh, Isaiah talks about all we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, which is incredibly negative. On the other hand, in the Gospel of John, chapter 10 verse 3, we have this. The sheep then listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, which is incredibly positive. Is that a contradiction? No, it's not. Certainly not. It's an illustration that just as a shepherd doesn't give up on his sheep when they're not doing what they're told, so God does not give up on us when we are falling short of the uh, perfection that he would desire for us even though we can't attain it. We need to be consistent in our walk with God, but we know we're not. We need to be consistent in our following of him, but sometimes that just doesn't pay off. Sometimes we need to examine ourselves. Sometimes we need to look at ourselves and say, am I that sheep that wanders away from God? Or am I that sheep that pays attention to his voice? In the psalm before us, we have the Lord being the shepherd, the sheep knowing that they lack nothing in his pastures. And that wonderful line, he restores my soul. David picks up that theme again in Psalm 51 and verse 12 when he says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. This is not an if or a maybe or a but. His sufficiency will sustain us. Being full of the joy of his salvation will give us the resources that we need to see us through the darkest of times, the diff most difficult of periods. And this surely for every single one of us must be one of the most difficult periods we've ever faced. I was born in the early 1960s. I was born in the aftermath 
of World War II, I'm not old enough to remember it, mercifully, but I certainly was around people who lived in that experience of the rationing, of the difficult times that faced the world afterwards in the uh, seemingly endless national debt that the country was in, uh, very much striving to get by on what seemed to be so little. Yet by the time the 1960s turned up, there was hope and there was brightness and things began to be uh, a lot more positive. And so this particular time will end too. Certainly it's going to help if our politicians do the right thing. And we need to pray for our politicians, all of them, regardless of our own party political affiliations or preferences. We need to pray for our leaders because they are where they are. But we also need to work out that our total sustenance is not down to them and it's not down to necessarily us. And it's certainly not down to the supermarkets having their shelves full of toilet paper and soap. Our sufficiency is in God and in him we trust because he will not let us down. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Peter knew what it was to have the love of God lavished upon him. He knew what it was to be instructed to feed those sheep, those lambs. He knew what it was to have forgiveness given to him. He knew what it was in his weakness to be commissioned to do the will of God. In John 21, 15 to 16, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Feed my lambs. More than what? More than the other disciples? More than the fish that they were eating at that particular time? Or was it more than the circumstances? Peter, do you love me more than the circumstances? Sometimes we, we live our lives too much under the circumstances. And, and, and come to, why wouldn't we? You know, I understand that. I'm, I'm prone to it myself. We look around us and everything seems to be despairing. Why wouldn't we also feel that despair in our hearts? But sometimes we have to look God straight in the eye and say, Lord, I love you more than these, more than these things. Right now, in the most difficult of times for us nationally, for the world over, Locally, personally, within our families, we need to know that our dependency is upon his sufficiency. We need to know that it is the Lord who is our shepherd and that through him we lack nothing. That he makes us to lie down in green pastures, he leads us beside the quiet waters, he refreshes our soul. He guides us along the right paths for his name's sake. And yes, even though we walk through the darkest valleys, the valley of the shadow of death, we don't need to fear the evil. We don't need to fear the evil one. Why? Because he is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. Heavenly Father, I pray that during this most difficult of times in the country's history, Lord Jesus, that you will bless us, you will restore our hearts, you will give us a confidence in your all-sufficiency. Father, I pray for every person who is watching this video now. I pray for everybody who is connected with our church via our Sunday ministry or via Sunshine Corner. And I pray that in you, they will find their security. I pray for your well-being, your keeping of their well-being, and I pray for their healing, and I pray for their finances, I pray for their jobs. Lord, I pray for every aspect of their lives. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. I hope this hasn't been too traumatic an experience for you. It's been very interesting preaching to an empty church and with just a camera in front of me. But the Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you, and the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Amen.